Hey friends, Kevin with Better Bible Reading. Glad to be with you for a very important discussion that always comes up towards the end of the year for Christians, Bible readers. We start thinking about our own version of a New Year's resolution, which typically means we're th thinking about Bible reading plans and what we want to accomplish when the year 2023 comes up or whenever it is that you're watching this video. Uh, when the new year sets in, we're thinking about what we want to accomplish in the Bible. Now, I have, over the last couple of years, shared a lot of different strategies that I have taken myself, and I always like to share those with you because oftentimes uh, many listeners and viewers like to uh, jump in and do what I'm doing, and it's always a fun way to kind of know that there's other people that are doing the same thing as us, and so it kind of serves as an extra dose of encouragement, because typically with Bible reading plans, we fall off the rails only a couple months in, but the more people that we have doing it together, uh, the easier something is to accomplish and to stay consistent with. This year, I'm doing something a little bit different, and I think I basically say that every year at this point, because I like to change things up. Last year, if you recall, I said that my goals for 2022 was to really double down on the active reading approach. Most of the Bible reviews that I did this year were active reading Bibles, and what I mean by that is Bibles that are best utilized with writing. So highlighting, underlining, using the side margins. If it's a journal Bible, using that. If it has to do with even writing our own commentaries, it's an active reading approach uh, to the Bible. So I didn't really focus too much on reading plans, at least uh, kind of formal reading plans, although I did have some goals throughout the year that I tried to do. Uh, this year, I'm doing something uh, that is probably more of a traditional approach, but I wanted to share with you what I'm doing because I think that if you uh, take the uh, necessary steps on the front end of 2023, and jump in, uh, you'll see that there is a lot of benefit to be had. But it's kind of getting ahead of ourselves because I want to actually share with you five different Bible reading plans that I want you to be aware of. You could certainly go all over the internet. There are hundreds, maybe thousands of different Bible reading plans. But uh, these five, I think, are five that I'm going to try to utilize throughout 2023. If that sounds daunting to you, then I want you to wait until we get into what they actually are, because I promise you that it is not uh, the same thing as me saying I'm going to read the Bible five times in a year. So let's kind of rewind and think about the phrase Bible reading plans and realize if I could communicate one thing to you uh, to better understand Bible reading plans. That would be to encourage you that when we say Bible reading plan, it is simply talking about a means to an end. Bible reading plans are only a means. They are not the end-all, be-all. They are not the silver bullet uh, by which we are going to be able to accomplish all of our kind of spiritual progress. Bible reading plans are simply a tool to be utilized. I think when we get into the New Year resolution mindset, we start thinking about uh, tweaking the Bible reading plan we had last year, or something must have been wrong with it because we didn't complete it, so we're going to try a new one, a better one. Uh, we have in this uh, kind of mindset the idea that Bible reading plans are what make or break a Bible reader. But a plan is simply, if we might want to kind of change the phraseology, we could say that instead of speaking about Bible reading plan, maybe I want to say it this way, a Bible reading goal. A plan, a Bible reading plan, we think of this kind of abstract system or this productivity hack uh, that we're going to, that we're going to utilize and we're going to uh, kind of make all of our dreams come true when it comes to the Bible. If we think about it as a Bible reading goal, Suddenly, we're looking beyond what might be on a printout, what might be on a digital web page, what might be on a graph or a chart. We're looking beyond that all the way to what we want that end result to actually be. 
I think that's maybe a, a more helpful way to speak of Bible reading plans is to look beyond the plan to what the goal is. What do you actually want to get out of that? What is your goal? What is your desire that you want to see come to fruition when it comes to the Bible? For some people, that's simply reading the entirety of the Bible. And probably the majority of Bible reading plans uh, come up with creative ways, whether they're chronological, whether they're genre-based, whether they're some kind of certain number of chapters each day. Most of these are kind of creative ways to help people read the entire Bible. So that's the goal. Uh, The Bible reading plan is just the vehicle or the method to get you there, but the goal is you actually want to read the entirety of the Bible and simply starting in Genesis chapter 1 and working your way to Revelation 22 is something that you don't trust yourself to just do. So you want some kind of uh, help along the way, but the goal is to read the entire Bible. Other Bible reading plans are not set up that way. It's not about reading the entirety. It's actually uh, moving from the big picture to a very specific goal. You want to have a better understanding of this topic. You want to have a better understanding of this particular book. And so these kind of reading plans, although they are reading plans, uh, their goals are much more specific. They're much more oriented towards a a kind of small win, a concentrated win, instead of just the big picture idea of reading the entire Bible. So that's why I say that I have five different reading plans that I'm going to use this year, because I have five different goals. Some of those are related to reading the entire Bible. Some of them are related to specific uh, aspects of the Bible that I want to uh, master to a greater degree than what I have so far in my life. So I want to uh, just share these with you. I'm not necessarily advocating that you use all five of them, but I think that as is the case in previous years when I share the Bible reading plans that I'm using, you'll find that it actually is doable and I'm not some kind of super freak or some kind of master magician here. I'm just a normal guy that's looking at uh, the time required, uh, what is required to actually be done, and say, yeah, that's doable for me. Uh, You don't have to be a scholar, an academic, anything like that. Uh, You just have to be somebody that wants to uh, continue to improve upon your Bible reading experience year after year. Sometimes that requires us to revisit old plans. Sometimes that requires us to try new ones. Uh, So last year was not necessarily about specific Bible reading plans. It was just the actual method of reading was all about active reading. And if you want to find out more about that, if that sounds like something you want to do this this year, just check out the YouTube video library for better Bible reading, and you'll see uh, tons of videos throughout this past year uh, that are related to that with a bunch of Bible reviews if you want to know what kind of Bible to use. But uh, this year, I'm going to be, well, I'm just going to work from number one to number five. Uh, This year, I'm going to be starting out with the Robert Murray McShane's Bible Reading Plan. Now, I'm a Presbyterian, and if you are in Presbyterian circles for long enough, you're going to hear Robert Murray McShane's name dropped at some point or another, especially when it comes to his Bible Reading Plan. Now, uh, Robert Murray McShane died before his 30th birthday. He was only 29 years old when he died. He was a a Scottish minister, and he did probably, uh, when we think about heroes of the Christian faith, he did much more than uh, most of us could ever hope or dream to do in terms of how short his life was. But perhaps one of the most influential and greatest impact uh, things that he did throughout the course of his life was come up with a Bible reading plan for his congregation. Now, I'm going to include this PDF uh, download with his reading plan uh, that I found online because this is not just the reading plan chart itself, but it's also some interesting things that he brings up, uh, kind of his own preface uh, for his congregation. Uh, I'm going to just kind of hit the high points of this, but I thought that this was really helpful because 
this, what he has to say, can apply to any Bible reading plan. And he starts out by uh, just encouraging his congregation that he loves them, and he thought it would be beneficial to share a specific reading plan for them, and that's because he wants them to really feast upon God's Word. Uh, This minister truly believes that the Bible is God's Word, and if that's true, then we can only benefit from giving ourselves to its reading and study. Now, he says, he lists four dangers and five advantages. Uh, Within the dangers, he says that we could, by implementing a Bible reading plan, so if you're a skeptic of Bible reading plans, but you happen to click on this video and you haven't turned away yet, uh, listen to these because this is uh, important. Uh, if you're a skeptic of Bible reading plans, if you don't think that they're, you know, valuable, if you think they may be legalistic or something that we shouldn't impose upon ourselves, he says here are some dangers. We could fall into the danger of formality. He says we're such weak creatures that any regularly returning duty is apt to degenerate into a lifeless form. So he says this is one of those instances, we want to use modern phrases, that we could kind of punch the spiritual time clock, as my uh, Baptist upbringing was uh, very common to warn us in the youth group about punching a spiritual time clock, just kind of going through the routine, that we can fall into the trap of formality. And Robert Murray McShane acknowledges that this is a danger of Bible reading plans. You can just get into the hustle and bustle of, ooh, I completed my reading for the day. And that is not where the value is, simply completing it for completion's sake. He says the second danger is self-righteousness. So if you're concerned about falling into just the empty pattern, the formality of it, the other extreme might be uh, promoting self-righteousness. Uh, Many people who have Bible reading plans tend to look down on and scoff at people who don't have Bible reading plans, and that is certainly a foolish endeavor, and it is certainly a sign of self-righteousness, as he says. Uh, The other thing that could be done is uh, that it could cause careless reading to take place. So, this is kind of the, the balance that we want to maintain. I talk about this in my free course on how to read the Bible. If you don't know about that course, go to betterbiblereading.com. You can enroll and start immediately for free, no payment or anything. Uh, This is one of the things that I mention about the Bible, is that the Bible is simultaneously an open invitation where we get to feast upon the Word of God, but also we're walking upon holy ground because this is God's inerrant, infallible Word And as we read it, as the author of Hebrews tells us, uh, we're laid bare, we're opened up before the Bible, Uh, our hearts are exposed, we come to realize the holiness of God, we come to realize our uh, dire need for salvation, our dire need for God to do a work in us. In a manner of speaking, the Bible reads us as much as we read it uh, when we are exposed before God's presence. And so we want to be careful. And he says if we're not careful, then Bible reading plans in and of themselves can simply promote careless reading. We can treat it as any other book. Uh, We can uh, fail to come before uh, God's presence as we hear uh, him speak to us from his word with a sense of reverence and respect to him. So that is a very uh, fascinating point to make. And he says, finally, uh, the danger of Bible reading plans is that they become a yoke too heavy to bear. He says, some may engage in reading with alacrity for a time. Afterwards, feel it a burden, grievous to be borne. They may find conscience dragging them through the appointed task without any relish of the heavenly food. If this be the case with any, throw aside the fetter and feed at liberty in the sweet garden of God. My desire is not to cast a snare upon you, but to be a helper of your joy. He says, look, uh, this is where my friend Matthew Everhard really shines through uh, in his recommendations for Bible reading plans because uh, he has a plan, which I'll speak of in just a moment, but he says, look, 
if you treat Bible reading plans as this heavy burden, something that dominates you, or if you feel like you're not spiritually worthy to be a Christian because you've fallen off the rails of your Bible reading plan, uh, then never approach one again. It would be better to completely throw out the idea of Bible reading plans than to put yourself under them in some sort of slavery and bondage where you feel so overcome and so mastered by the requirements uh, that it ceases to be a joy and becomes such a heartless task uh, that robs you of your joy. I think that's so well put because, in my opinion, that is probably the greatest danger of Bible reading plans is to treat them as the spiritual litmus test of our Christian life. That's not what they're for. Remember, they're not the end-all, be-all. They're a means to an end. And if we make them ultimate, then they will dominate us, and we will be cast down into utter despair. And that is not the idea of Bible reading plans at all. So what are the advantages? Well, he says, the advantage of this plan, which I'm about to get into, is that it promotes uh, that the whole Bible will be read throughout uh, the course of a year. Number two, that time will not be wasted in choosing what portions to read. Number three, parents will have a regular subject upon which to examine their children. And number four, pastors will know in what part of the pasture the flock are feeding. And number five, the sweet bond of Christian love and unity will be strengthened. So now I spent some time breaking down the dangers, and then I just flew through the advantages. Uh, but the reason I did that is because I want to now present what this reading plan is that he's talking about, because the advantages that he's mentioning here are directly re related to his Bible reading plan. So the name of the game in the Robert Murray McShane Bible reading plan is that you read the entire Bible in, the, in a year, but it's more than that. You actually read the Old Testament one time through, but you read the New Testament and the Psalms twice. So. You read the entire Bible once, and you also read the New Testament and the book of Psalms an extra time through, throughout the course of the year. What this works out to is essentially four chapters a day on average. However, there are multiple days scattered throughout where you'll be reading um, more like five or six chapters. And it's kind of based on how long the chapters are themselves. So in general, you have just the main pattern of four chapters a day, uh, but there are, again, select days where you will have more. But what contrasts that is just the length. And this is going to be, again, included in the uh, description of this video. I'll post a link to it so that you can download this. Uh, you have a chart, and this Bible reading plan does have specific chapters to be read each and every day. So it is day specific. Uh, now, that is probably one of the biggest uh, killers of, of people who are trying to read Bibles, uh, read Bible reading plans and follow them to a T, is that if you miss a day, well, it can quickly become very difficult to catch up because you have specific readings for specific days and that can add up and multiply and you get kind of the compound interest effect where eventually you give up because you've missed too many days and it's just impossible to keep up. I will say this, if you do this plan with me and you miss a day, it is better to not try to make up the day because the first time that you try to make up a day, that will become the new norm for you going forward. I've seen this happen firsthand and for other people too many times that when we miss, let's say we miss our reading on January 9th, January 10th comes around and we say, I'm going to read what was on January 9th before I read January 10th. Okay, you complete that, no problem. You go on a few days further into your reading plan. And then when the day gets difficult, you have in the back of your mind, I've missed a day before and I was able to make it up. So suddenly, the kind of uh, firsthand importance of reading on that particular day goes out the window because in the back of your mind, you're giving yourself the allowance 
of saying, well, I can always go back and double up. So it's not a big deal if I miss a day. Well, suddenly missing a day turns into more days and more days, and it's impossible. But because you've also made it a rule to yourself that you have to um, catch up on all the past reading, you feel like you're not allowed to just move on to that day. So you just give up. So I think just saying, saying this is an encouragement to you, maybe even to myself. If you miss a day, don't try to make it up. Just pick up on whatever day it is and start again from there. That's probably the best way to ensure that even if you miss a few days throughout the year, you'll actually continue to work your way through this plan instead of feeling like you've missed too much because you can never miss too much. You will only miss uh, the previous day. Just read for whatever day it is. Okay, enough rambling about that. Now, I like this plan because I'm doing some more intensive study uh, for some upcoming exams that I'm going to be taking in my own denomination. And so I need uh, kind of <clears throat> repeated exposure to books of the Bible. This plan is going to be helpful to me for that because it is going to allow me to work through the New Testament twice as well as the Psalms twice, uh, which can only be helpful in terms of trying to memorize certain things in preparation for my studies. Uh, I will say this as well. One way that this plan shines is the fact that it uh, gives you readings from multiple genres throughout the course of a day. For example, uh, for the month of September in this plan, let's say September 1st, uh, you read 1 Samuel 25, 1 Corinthians 6, Ezekiel 4, and Psalms chapters 40 and 41. Now that's great because you have historical writings for 1 Samuel, you have New Testament letters for 1 Corinthians, you have Old Testament prophets for Ezekiel, and you have the wisdom literature for Psalms. That's four different biblical genres you're interacting with in one day, which is awesome uh, because it just gives you kind of that uh, wide range and that vast exposure to uh, the different writing styles of the Bible. So you're not stuck necessarily in one genre for day after day after day so you can kind of become burnt out from it. So helpful in that sense. The one other thing that I'll say as well is that he divides this up between what he calls family and secret readings. Now what that secret reading means is just uh, personal private reading. Uh, that's, that's all it means. Now, you don't have to necessarily follow this, uh, especially if you're a single person. Uh, but the value of this is that uh, two of the chapters are considered for family reading, which is great because if you believe in the importance of family worship, you're getting together with your spouse, your children, uh, to interact with God's Word. Uh, you have two chapters out of your reading for that day uh, that are recommended to use for that. And of course, there's no rule to say which ones you can and can't, but it's just set up this way on the chart. And then the other readings are for your uh, private reading. So helpful again. He's trying to utilize ways to make this not only a personal thing, but also a family thing. So that's, that's a really awesome thing. If you are single um, and you want to use this plan, maybe uh, substitute the word family for small group. If you're uh, part of a small group at your church, your church is looking for a Bible reading plan, that would be a great option. Uh, if you're like a part of a men's group or a women's group or something like that, uh, this plan could be great because then, you, as I mentioned at the beginning, you have that added benefit of knowing other people are doing this with you. It serves as a uh, way of maintaining accountability for yourself and others. And you have something spiritual to talk about besides college football scores and uh, the price of gas. Right? You can actually talk about reading the Bible, uh, what you read the, that day, what you read previous days. And uh, those people you're talking to have a reference point because they were reading that too. And so uh, it's an awesome way to kind of maintain that synergism. All right. If this plan sounds like too much, uh, I've actually started from the most difficult plan and I'm working down through these next four, which will be much faster than this. I'm working down to more simple plans. If that sounds like too much, what I would recommend is a modified version of this. So throw out the extra reading of the New Testament, the extra reading of Psalms and simply do um, the 2-1 plan. Let's do the math here. There are 1,189 chapters in the entire Bible. 
if you were to divide that up by 365 days, you come out with three point blah, 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 blah chapters per day. So let's just boil that down. We'll say it takes three chapters a day to read the Bible in a year. Now, the reason this plan is called the 2-1 plan is because if you wanted to take those 929 chapters out of the Old Testament and 260 chapters out of the New Testament, then you roughly have two-thirds of the Bible in the Old Testament and one-third in the New Testament. It's not exact, but we're just saying roughly here. So again, let's keep the generalization going. and. This comes out to, technically speaking, about two and a half chapters a day in the Old Testament and 0.7 chapters a day in the New Testament. Now, one of the things that I hate about Bible reading plans are the charts where you have to read partial chapters. I absolutely do not like that because it just gets messy and when you're already reading a chapter for a Bible reading plan, it's easier to just go ahead and read that entire chapter than to stop halfway through or something like that. Only exception might be Psalm 119 because it's so long. So, we don't want to read 0.7 chapters a day in the New Testament or 2.5 chapters a day in the Old Testament. So, we can just, again, kind of generalize and boil that down to saying read 2 chapters a day in the Old Testament and 1 chapter a day in the New Testament. Now, you will run out of chapters before you run out of uh, time. So, you're going to finish out the New Testament before the entire year is done. But this plan is called the 2-1 plan because this is not an exact 365 day, but in roughly the course of a year, just read two chapters a day in the Old, one chapter a day in the New, and you'll make your way through the Bible in roughly one year. Now, I mentioned my friend Matthew Everhard earlier, and this is where I want to give a shout out to him. I will put a a link in the description for this as well. But Matthew Everhard has a very simple, and I'll again post this in the description, a very simple chart that you can print out and tape on the inside of your Bible like I have done. And this chart is literally the entire Bible, book by book, with the amount of chapters numbered sequentially and a little box next to each chapter so you can literally make a check mark next to each chapter as you read it. Now, the reason why that is valuable for something like the 2-1 plan is that if you don't want to read Genesis 1 and 2, day 1, Genesis 3 and 4, day 2, Genesis 5 and 6, day 3, if you don't want to do that, all you have to do is make sure you got a pen, pick any chapter in the Old Testament. You can float around however much you want. Just read two chapters a day, and the way you keep up with what you've read and what you haven't read is to open up your Bible to where you've printed out and taped that little chart, make those check marks, color it in, highlight it, whatever you do, and you'll know what you've read, what you haven't read. Same thing for the New Testament with your one chapter a day. This gives you good uh, liberty to float around without forgetting where you're at in your reading plan because it doesn't matter what day it is, it's two chapters in the old, one chapter in the new, and you have this chart to keep track of your progress. No bookmarks needed or anything like that. So it's a very powerful tool that really is a minimalist approach. You don't have to know what day it is, you don't have to know what month it is, two chapters in the old, one chapter in the new, every single day, and this chart gives you that freedom to explore uh, anywhere between Genesis 1 and Revelation 22 that you haven't read already. So again, shout out to Matt Everhard. That's just one of those ways that he is trying to keep uh, the Bible reading plan idea from becoming a yoke or a burden to you, as Robert Murray McShane mentions. All right, so those are my two read the entire Bible plans, and I'm going to do both of those uh, this year. But these three plans that I'm about to talk about are not the entire Bible. These are more goal-oriented. Remember, we could actually substitute the word plan for goal, and I think it's valuable to do so here because my goal is, related to this plan, to be more proficient in the New Testament 
to be more proficient in Proverbs, to be more proficient in the Psalms. So these are month to month plans. I don't have a specific month in mind. I just know that I want to do all three of these throughout the course of the year uh, during some three months out of the year 2023. Now, I've done all three of these before, and in fact, this past year, I've actually shared uh, details about these, but these three plans are as follows. And again, we're still going from uh, maybe more difficult or more reading required down to uh, easiest. So the first one is the New Testament in one month. I did this last year. It was highly valuable. I shared that in a podcast episode. Some of you uh, shared that you were going to try to do that as well. And it was a very, very helpful experience to kind of get that quick, rapid-fire aerial shot of the New Testament. Now, the thing about this plan is that your reading will greatly... The reading is very dynamic because it could change drastically from one day to the next. But the thing about the Bible is when you get to the New Testament, the books progressively get shorter, with the exception of Revelation. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule, because I also realize that the book of Hebrews is right next to James. You have 13 chapters, verses 5, so it's not exact. But generally speaking, when you start in the Bible, you get 28 chapters in Matthew, and that's the longest amount of chapters in any of the four Gospels. And you get to the book of Acts, 28 chapters again, but then the books gradually get less and less until suddenly you're down to uh, 2nd John, 3rd John, Jude. You got a chapter apiece in each of those. And then you have, of course, the finale in Revelation. This takes the concept of the New Testament being comprised of 26 books, and basically the easiest way to read the New Testament in one one month's time is to read one book a day. Now again, I realize that that is a lot of reading for Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, and Revelation. Over 20 chapters in each of those except for Mark. But if you can hunker down and drink from the fire hydrant for those first few days, the longer you stay in the plan, unlike other Bible reading plans, the easier it gets because the less you have to read each and every day. And the value of doing this is it's just one month. We're not talking about something you have to maintain for 12 months out of the year. I'm not saying read the New Testament 12 times in a year, do it every month. I'm just saying pick one month. So maybe pick the summertime or maybe pick a, just a slower season in your life where you know you're going to have more time to read. Even if you are doing a commute, uh, you could do this in audio Bible version, although I highly recommend reading plans kind of stick to a physical copy of the Bible so your eyes can see and not just listening with your ears. But either way, this plan is highly valuable because it's a one-month goal. You accomplish it, hunker down for that one month, and then you've done it, and you have nothing but good things and nothing but personal uh, spiritual benefit uh, to be had from it. So highly recommend doing that. The second one is my other monthly goal, and that is to read the Psalms in one month. This one, depending, uh, could be complicated. However, generally speaking, the Psalms have an ebb and flow of long and short, but generally speaking, once you get to the tail end, especially like the final book of the Psalms, they get shorter. So if you open up to Psalm 150, 149, 148, those are fairly short Psalms. So those are just one, each and every one of those chapters are very much compacted down compared to like what you get in Psalm 119 as an example. So this one, you're going to have easy days and uh, more difficult days kind of, uh, kind of bouncing back and forth. So this one is not necessarily a hardest to easiest flow. But again, it's just going back to math. 
The New Testament was 26 books, so you know that you can complete that plan one book a day, any month, even February. And the Psalms, there are 150. So if you do the math, how many books do I have to read in the course uh, of a day to complete all 150 in one month? Well, five. Generally speaking, we're talking about months as being 30 days, exception of February. Then you can read the entire Psalter in one month by reading five Psalms a day. The uh, 1611 facsimile Bible that I have, and I showed uh, some my review of the Bible, I showed the front of kind of reading calendar, and that reading calendar recommends that you read uh, the Psalms every month. And so they want you to do this every single month of the year, uh, but you don't have to do that. Uh, just pick one month and do this. But again, it's it's just a fun way to kind of drink from the fire hydrant for a little bit, and you get a quick burst of familiarity. You can see the flow of the Psalms in a way that you couldn't see if you just read one a day or something like that. You're fully invested in the Psalms for that entire month, and so you're going to notice a lot of things that you don't notice uh, otherwise. Same thing with the New Testament. So pick a month out of the year to read the New Testament, a book a day. Pick a month out of the year to read the Psalms, and that comes out to five Psalms per day. Uh, the third and final one, this is maybe one of the most well-known, and that is the proverb of the day approach. So I want to read uh, the book of Proverbs, at least one proverb a day, to get through all 31 Proverbs in one month. Um, there are apps that you can download for this, where most of the time it's just taking one verse from the chapter from Proverbs, but the uh, apps you can download, or whatever the case may be, if you want to know what you're supposed to read for that day, just look at the date. For example, if it's the 20th, Proverbs 20 is what you read that day. If it's the 5th, Proverbs 5 is what you read for that day. And this is the same idea, but this one's easy because it's just one chapter a day. But again, it's looking at a book uh, with your uh, full focus, and you're trying to get a huge investment uh, by hunkering down and just being all in in that particular book for the course of one month. This one is probably the most doable, honestly, because uh, the New Testament in one month, you're reading an entire book. Psalms, you're reading multiple chapters. But in Proverbs in one month, one chapter a day. Very, very, very simple. And it's a quick win. Number one, if you've never read the entire book of Proverbs before, it's a great way to interact with it and not say, oh, I want to read that this year. Just say, I'm going to read it this month and just read a chapter a day and you got it. Uh, Proverbs, because it's so short, this is one of those that you could actually do multiple times throughout the year. You could actually add this one on to any other reading plan you're doing and it wouldn't be a burden because it's just adding one chapter a day. So with these five, I hope that you see the value in at least one of them. These are five that I'm going to be doing this year, and I want to share that with you. I want you to join me with any of those that sound interesting. I'll have a, a kind of a range of things added to the description that you can download. Um, I'll have a link to that free course I mentioned if you don't know about that. Um, I'll have the printouts and all that kind of stuff linked to Matt Everhart's channel and his printout. Uh, but the big idea is I hope you're excited about going into the year 2023 to read the Bible, and I hope that you understand that Bible reading plans are really a means to an end of achieving our Bible reading goals. These are not magical formulas. These are simply guided steps to help us along the way. But the idea is to get us to God in His Word, not to put check marks down, not to say, great, I finished that, not to look down on others because they're not doing it, but to meet with God himself in his word. And these are ways to kind of uh, shepherd us along the way, keep us on that narrow road of consistent Bible reading. 
And uh, I hope you'll join with me this year as uh, I endeavor to do that going into 2023. And uh, I'll share some uh, progress along the way, as I always do. Um, but I hope you have a great rest of the year. I hope that you have benefited from uh, all the things that I've done on uh, the Better Bible Reading podcast and the YouTube channel, as those have kind of branched out into uh, most of the time separate entities, uh, although I do share some things on both platforms, depending on what it is. But if you want to know more about me, you want to know more about Better Bible Reading, head on over to betterbiblereading.com, and that is the easiest place to gain access to everything, and so you don't miss out something on YouTube and on the podcast or vice versa, or an article that's not on either of those. So thank you so much for your time. So glad to be with you uh, for this episode, and I'll see you again real soon. Take care.